turn it on. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today has been a really wet, soggy day. I actually went outside. I said, boy, those chickens make me go outside in crazy weather. I went out because I couldn't find Silver Fox and her babies and it was really raining pretty hard. So I went out onto the porch and then I went outside and looked around in the bush that she's been hiding in and she wasn't there so then I looked up onto the hill and I could see her under the pine tree. So I went walking up to the pine tree. It is a squishy, gushy river going up there. The ground is really saturated. And when I got up there, she looked like she was going to start walking towards the, the area where I let her in. And she turned around and ran under the pine, her and her babies both. So I thought, well, you're just going to have to stay outside. And when you want in, you'll come back. Well, Jim told me that she was pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth by the door. And so he let her in. So she now is in for the night. Maybe. I, maybe. I think so. I'll have to lock the door. I haven't locked the All the, the babies door. were back out when I, just before I came in. Oh, over. those naughty babies. But hopefully she doesn't fly <laughs> over the fence. And um, I will lock them in when I'm done with the video. Well, today I actually brought my notebook in because... I get started, as soon as the camera's turned on, it's like it wipes my brain clean. It goes, Psh, I forgot. That's the sign for forgot, in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign for forgot. And I was watching Leedy, and she was talking about our gut feeling. And, you know, it made me think of my daughter, Jessica. When Jessica was very little, we were doing foster care, and we would get teenage children. She was she was um, two years old, I believe, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, when the foster kids would come through the door, she used to look at them and then she'd say, I don't like you. <laughs> and it's like, my goodness. And it would be not with every child. She would only say that with certain ones. And sure enough, that was the one that gave me the most trouble. And one time, one of the caseworkers came in and said, I don't like you. And it's like, oh no, now she's doing the adults. And sure enough, that was a caseworker that I never want to work with again. Because she would tell you, oh, this child is so beautiful. And that's all she would say. And she would never say the real difficulties that they had. So when you got them, you were really shocked because they had a lot more problems than what she would let on. And then when you'd ask for help, she was never available. So I decided that whenever they would call, I would say, there was two questions I used to ask. Who's the caseworker? And what color is their hair? <laughs> because, you know, you can't ask what color the skin is because you would get in trouble, real big trouble. And I wanted the children that were with the darker skin and the darker hair. Those kids were very good kids. They really were. I didn't want the girls with the blonde hair. I'm sorry, girls out there with the blonde hair. But you were always, not you, but they <laughs> were always boy crazy, really boy crazy. And it was really hard to keep them put. And they were used to having their way and getting their way and flirting their way around things. And I really didn't want to have to deal with that. Um, but going with your gut feeling, I was thinking of when I had my senior picture taken. You know how you you know in your head that you like this picture. You know, my yearbook picture is what I'm talking about. My um, yearbook picture is the only picture I have where I'm not smiling, smiling with my teeth showing because there was a boy that I liked and he said that he liked that picture the best. And so that's the picture I chose and it wasn't one with my teeth showing. It was just a smile. Not my way of smiling. I had always shown my teeth because even when we played devils and angels, I could never be an angel because I always showed my teeth. So that was um, what she was talking about, following your gut feeling. I should have followed my gut feeling and gone with the picture that I liked. And then my yearbook would have that picture and not the one that somebody else said was just the best picture ever. Well, it was and it wasn't. Um, and also, I was watching Carol, the plane 
Vanilla Grandma, and she was talking about how she was watching um, Life with Patty. Now I've named, oh gosh, three three channels. <laughs> Liddy MC is her channel. That was the one with the gut feeling. And then Carol, which is the plain Vanilla Grandma, was watching Patty, which is Life with Patty. <laughs> And she was watching her, and she was making a lemon bread, or had made a lemon bread. I must have missed that video. I didn't see it. I try to stay away from some videos that have food that I know I might like to, because I don't know if it affects you this way, but when you see things that you really know you shouldn't be having, all of a sudden you think, gosh, hmm, maybe I'll have something that's sort of like it, or like it, or it. And... Um, knowing that I'm trying to stay away from carbs, that's a really carby dish that I would have to stay away from. That's like when people do the banana bread. Man, I would love... I've got some bananas in the freezer that I froze a long time ago. Because when we used to make smoothies, um, if the bananas were getting a little ripe, I used to take them out of the peel, put them in the um, little baggie, put them in the freezer... And this way, they were always there for a smoothie if we decided to have a smoothie. But then we went on this ketogenic way of eating, which meant bananas were a no-no. So I've got these bananas in the freezer that mm, would be so good some days. But I'm thinking maybe the chickens should have them, but I haven't <laughs> put them out for them yet. I'm still debating. That's kind of still on the back burner in my brain. So the downside of watching videos with food is you sometimes want to have that same food. And then I was listening to another video. I don't remember whose it was. It might have been Carol still. I think it was. The plain um, vanilla grandma. And she was talking about something that she was watching. About um, someone doing an interview of how this whole situation in life has been affecting them. And it, I didn't get to watch the video that she talked about, but I'm thinking I should watch something that's about that. Like, how is this whole situation affecting you? Is it making you more skittish? Like the lady in the store that went, <clears throat> when I walked by, it was like, oh my goodness, gracious me. And I actually said to her, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, in my mind, you are okay. Just... You're overreacting, and a lot of people, I think, are overreacting. The media is overreacting. It is dangerous, but my goodness, please, you're making yourself sick, and you're going to make yourself gain weight because um, it causes stress. Stress makes you eat, and it's not good for you. And Plus, it's not good for your health in the long run. Okay. you got to watch a lot of the medicines that are out there, too. I've noticed one of your ads was a medicine... And all the side effects and all the the compromising of immunity because of the the different different stuff. Yeah, you medicines. gotta watch. It. Don't watch all my ads. They're not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if they're if they're a long ad, I would say watch for a few seconds if you wish, but click it and say skip it because some of them. I, Jane was telling me that there was a, there was one ad that was 18 minutes long. Can you imagine? 18 minutes long? Somebody must have paid to have these put on there is all I can figure. Because when I was watching the um, Rick's channel, I can't, um, Rich, the Keto Mechanic or keto something. Keto Mechanic. And he's changed. Fat, fueled fat, by Fat. Fueled by Fat. Thank you. <laughs> when, now there's another channel. When I was watching <laughs> him... He had mentioned something about, uh, I think he mentioned something about where he had, he was doing some kind of, some kind of in, um, coaching or something. No, like he that. was doing something where he was trying to figure out this, the rhythm of YouTube and, or something. I don't know exactly, but it was a long time ago. And I think he had put some, I don't know, but anyways. I think some people pay to have ads put on. He had said something about people paying. Paying, yeah, some people paying. I don't know if he ever did or not, but it was, it's the, it's so, if they're that long, I would say don't watch it, because chances are my video probably is only a minute and a half long or 10 minutes long, and the ad is like 18 minutes long. That's a wasting of your time sometimes 
Nobody should have to wait that long to watch what they want to watch. Nobody. Not even nobody. Nobody. So, and I was going to tell you too, this is um, the end of the month. Today's the last day. And I looked to see how we did. You know, we did terrible. The list, list is very short, but compared to the other months, like I'll show you the month before. The month before it went all the way down the page. Whereas this one was very short. But in this one, I have to say, even though the price was more, everything was more, it cost us more. We had um, motor vehicle, motorcycle um, registrations and insurance in there. We had a big water, the water bill comes every three months. And we had a paying water bill on our house, plus the apartment house, which is really bad. And then um, the little house that Emily's in, because the landlords have to pay the water bill here. That's part of it. And if you don't pay it, they tax it onto your taxes. And I'd rather pay the bill. And then I had house insurance for um, the apartment house, too. I had to pay that insurance. Which, if this whole situation... See, this is how this whole situation is affecting me. I have a buyer for the house. But they wanted the building inspector to inspect it before they made the final so say. Their, their building their inspector. Their building inspector. They wanted to inspect it before they'd give the final, yes, we will buy it. And then we could sign the papers and get it gone. But the building inspector that they've hired doesn't want to, to come and do the inspection because of this crazies that's in the world. And he, you can't blame him. He might get sick walking working by himself you never know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah working by yourself because yes. he'd be there all by himself doing this in an empty house other than he could do it when my land my one tenant was at work it wouldn't even he wouldn't even have to have contact with anybody so and then the um paperwork could be done and the way they're doing a lot of things it could be done electronically it never needs to be even but then again, according to our governor, it's non-essential, so non-essential business can't do. So there's a lot of houses that are sitting waiting for somebody to look at. They're doing virtual um, tours, which I still don't know how they're going to do this, especially with the building inspectors. If they want a building inspector to inspect it, it's still going to be put in limbo. So that's where my house is. It's in limbo. Do you remember? Do you, did you know there was a limbo? <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to another thought. When I was growing up, there was purgatory, limbo, and heaven. And the babies all went to limbo. And then they went to heaven. Uh, if, they, if they weren't baptized, they always went to limbo. <laughs> just limbo. It's a place that you just stay. And purgatory, you had to go there to suffer for a while, for many thousands of years. So they wanted people to pray for you so that you would, could get out of purgatory and get to heaven. But, you know, that was, I don't know if they still teach that or not. I don't know. All I know is what I was taught when I was in lower grades in the, in, when I was little. And I made my first communion when I was in second grade, where now they make you make it when you're in third grade. I was confirmed when I was in fifth grade, which now they make you wait until you're uh, like um, junior or senior year of school. So, you know, things were different. The Pope only came out once every four years, so they did all these grades. So I was confirmed. Bishop. My, or Bishop, yeah, sorry. Not the Pope. The Pope never has visited us. <laughs> the Bishop has visited us. <laughs> oh, gosh. And you're the convert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really messed that up. Um, the The bishop would come out every four years. And so, because of, now they come out every year. where So they would gather everybody. So my brother Anthony and my brother Laurel and I were all confirmed at the same time. And the whole church was just full. And I remember they did a lot of questions we had to answer prior to his visit because he said he might ask you a question and I feared oh please don't ask me a question but because I was only fifth grade and there was a lot of other older kids if there was to be a question they would probably be the ones to get the question and not me so 
that was the the mm -hmm. joy of being young. But I, you know, and the funny part is, I when I was confirmed, I just chose a name. I didn't have to write a paper on why I'm choosing this name or anything about that saint to say why I wanted that name. I was just thinking my initials. <laughs> that was so stupid. But I was thinking my initials should be MGMG. -G. So my name that I chose was to keep my initials MGMG. -G. But now I'm now I'm the MGGB. <laughs> I changed it completely. But the little M is still in there, so it would be M G M B. <laughs> I'm a uh, well, sort of, no, whatever. <laughs> but I'm I'm a I'm a sports car. <laughs> I don't know what those cars are. And, uh, Triumph. I think it was a Triumph. Triumph MG. Or MGB. Something. Maybe that was a brand too. I don't. I remember. don't know, but I, I think of a little sports car, a little red sports car. I am. I know when I was a teenager, I wanted one of those cars. Oh, I only wanted a Corvette, and I wanted a Corvette in 1980. Was the year I was going to buy a Corvette, a brand new Corvette. And my father used to say, "Why do you want one of those cars for? You know, you can only drive it just half a year." And I just did. I just wanted a Corvette, and I was going to get a Corvette, but instead I got married, so I didn't buy a Corvette. You missed mm. out. We should have waited one more year, and you would have yeah. had a Corvette, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That's, that's okay. Life. That's I got the, the better end of the deal. Yeah, you got this <laughs> dial. <laughs> Speaking of cars. What? Oh, no. Right now, uh, if anybody out there is contemplating changing a vehicle... Right now is could be a good time to talk to dealers, especially the independents, because they have a lot of inventory they're sitting on, and they're making real good deals. Really? The guy I work with just bought a used 2019 uh, GMC Crew Cab Dually four-wheel drive, and he got it for a steal. Mm. So anybody out there may be looking for a vehicle, and Check might it be, out. Might you may be able to get some good deals. Might be the time. But I'm not buying a car. I, no. My car is my forever car. It doesn't go anywhere hardly <laughs> at all. So it should last me a long time as long as it doesn't rust. And I had it undercoated. Well, I think this video is plenty long enough. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. And if the ads are too long, please don't, don't stick around and watch. I know if you think that I need the money to... Whatever. No, I don't. It's just nice that they're there. I'm glad I made that that um, milestone. Milestone. Yeah, that's the word. I was going to say that <laughs> level or that milestone is better. So I, I will talk to you all again tomorrow. So you have a great night and I'll see you then. Bye.